Hey, hey guys, I just got home from work and honestly, if I was back in the US, I probably would have even left the office by now. That's one of the nice things about working in Denmark. You've got great work-life balance, you have extra holidays than I had back in the US and a generally pleasant work atmosphere. But sometimes not everything is perfect and there can be downsides and culture clashes when it comes to working in Denmark. That's what today's video is about. Let's go check it out. So one thing that can be a bit confusing if you're not used to working in Denmark, and this can really be a culture shock and even a downside to working in a Danish professional setting, is flat management. Now a flat management style means that there won't be many levels between you and even senior management of the company. Whenever you're starting, this may be something that takes a little bit of getting used to because you could have somewhat unclear roles and unclear responsibilities. You may not be used to having a workplace without that kind of micromanagement that we know usually exists in countries like the US, UK, and especially Asia. Those kinds of workplaces that are a bit more hierarchical. And that doesn't really happen in Denmark. Yeah, one of my first roles when I came over as a manager, I had to adjust to this because people would come in my office and give me their opinions on everything. And very quickly it was explained to me that this is part of what they think their expectation is as an employee. So that was a bit of an adjustment for me where people expect that their voice is going to be heard as they go through stuff in, in a flat style like this. So it was a super interesting culture change. I wouldn't say clash for me, but it was certainly something I had to adjust to. And another clash that I had to adjust to, I think many people do when they come to Denmark, is to realize that there's less standardization. And what I mean by that is that Denmark and Danish culture is very much built on the foundations of fairness. And fairness sometimes means that different people get treated in different ways. You know, especially you'll notice different things where certain people may seem to leave a little bit earlier from the office, or seem to work from home a little bit more, or have other certain special provisions that you may not be privy to or know the details about. And this is something where I feel like in other cultures and other countries you may have it where everyone is treated exactly the same. It's almost treated as an environment that fairness means that everybody gets treated the exact same way with no exceptions to keep it fair. Whereas in Denmark, it seems like you can have a lot more exceptions for different people, especially if there's different things in say a private life with children or family members that have to be taken care of that you can have accommodations made for. So sometimes you can feel like maybe you're not getting treated the same way as someone else, but also you don't always know the details of why someone is acting a little bit differently or maybe leaves a little bit earlier than you do on a given day. Yeah, and what you may not see is that person leaving early may have come into work at 7 a.m. And also the fact that it's none of your business. <laughs> um, and I think that's something that I know different American offices that I've worked in, people really struggled with that. If somebody had some sort of special privilege, people would act as if they were being robbed for not having the same exact privilege. And sometimes you don't know what's behind it or you don't know the reason why somebody's leaving early. And, and even if it's something as simple as, well, my kid has uh, handball games on Tuesday and Thursday, you really should just let that go and know that your colleagues are going to make up for it. You're part of a team and you can trust that they're going to carry their burden and their weight on the team while also managing their family obligations, even if you don't have those family obligations yourself. Now, another potential culture clash is the fact that in a Danish office and really in the country of Denmark as a whole, trust levels are very high. And you may not be used to that, especially because like we talked about before with flat management styles, you may have a higher degree of autonomy and trust built into your relationship with your manager and the other people on your team. Now with that, it may even mean that you need to train yourself or onboard yourself when you first start. You may have tasks that are just trusted that you'll get them done. And there's also a high degree of trust in the fact that you're gonna be able to perform on day one all of the skills that you said you were able to do during the job interview process or that are printed on your CV. There's a high degree of trust that you'll be able to do that and that trust can also be eroded over time. So it's definitely a potential culture clash and maybe even a downside that uh, with those trust, uh, with the high trust in Denmark, you also have a high degree of expectations to meet. Yeah, and part of that trust too is an expectation that you're gonna come with questions, that you're gonna come See, even as a new hire, asking questions about different things. And if you're not asking questions, people kind of assume that you know what you're doing. This is a, a kind of culture where people start at a high level of trust and it can either grow or it may erode, as Derek said, over, over time with that. So that can be a clash if you're assuming that all the people are gonna tell you what to do, which may be a little bit more kind of hierarchical or very much laid out to you, you can find that you need to step up in a different way and that can be difficult from different cultures. Now, another potential culture clash or challenge of, of working in Denmark is maybe one that's not as much fun to talk about because especially Denmark is thought of as a very progressive country, a very open country, and it is. But one of the downsides is that discrimination can still be present. 
Now, this is a country where you still put a picture of yourself on your CV. This is where you talk about your family situation, your interests, your hobbies. Coming from the US, these are things that you almost never put on a CV, definitely not a picture. And in fact, a lot of companies are moving to eliminate names from the top of CVs in the review to, to eliminate any chance of discrimination. There's a chance that you can have kind of a, a thing that's known as a culture fit where you look, someone can be looked at and maybe it's not even intentionally discriminatory. It can just be, oh, that person may not fit here. I'm not sure if that's gonna work out with our office culture that we have here. These are things that in other cultures and other countries, there are maybe hard laws against these sorts of things, but in Denmark, it's a little bit less controlled in that way. And so you can find that some of this kind of casual discrimination can find its way into the workplace. And this is something that is something to be aware of. Yeah, I know in, in my case, you know, I've applied for quite a few jobs and often I'll see that the job duties themselves have nothing to do with needing to speak Danish or another Nordic language but they'll print in the job listing that they want somebody who's a Danish speaker or a native Danish speaker. And you know that's something that you really wouldn't be able to do in the US because it would discriminate against people uh, unless it was a qualified uh, duty of the job. So those protected classes may be a bit different in a country like the United States versus in Denmark itself. You may also hear a little bit of discrimination or even some maybe off-color jokes that are sort of part of Danish humor. We've talked about that before on our channel, but you may even work in a kind of laid back environment where uh, people on your team or other people that you're working with may have some off-color jokes or maybe even some things that are a little bit ooh, like me too kind of things that you just may not be comfortable with depending on the culture that you come from. But things are and tend to be a little bit more laid back in Denmark and you're gonna have to take those things with a grain of salt. Now, another thing that can be a downside in a culture clash if you're not used to it in Denmark is the fact that you may not be eligible for all of the things that fall into what the Danes call flex security. So if you don't know much about it, it's a system whereby there's a pretty robust social safety net and a pretty robust uh, social welfare for people who are out of a job or maybe not working. For that reason, it also makes it very easy to hire and fire people. Um, and by design, it's sort of set up so that companies can hire and fire at will and so that people are taken care of if they are unfortunately terminated. However, a lot of people that are immigrating from other countries, especially non-EU countries, will not be eligible for that system. And if you're working for a Danish company or a Danish manager that may have your employment in their hands, they may not be aware of the fact that you're not eligible for those benefits and flex security really only hurts you. And the fact that you also may have visa complications as a result of being hired uh, or being let go without uh, much time in between. Yeah, generally, you'll have about six months to either find a new job or leave the country. And that can put a lot of stress on somebody who's relocating from far away for a job. Yeah, I think these are the kind of things that obviously if you're from Denmark or even an EU citizen working in Denmark, you may not think about quite as much. But for folks like us that are in a situation that we're not EU, we're not Danish, these are sorts of things that can really make or break the ability to stay in the country. So they're really important to be aware of. It's easy to talk about flex security for the happy side of it, the easy hiring, but it's that negative side of it that can really throw people for a loop. And we've seen people that have had to leave the country because of this. Yeah, and especially in uh, places where it's somewhat easier for an immigrant to get a job like the startup community or even a small business that's scaling up, they may not be aware of this. And the fact that maybe they don't get their funding, suddenly that Danish entrepreneur who's really fun and gave you a job and took a chance on you may not know that it has further implications uh, for you if you're not from Denmark. Yeah. And this kind of goes along to the next thing that can be a little bit of a downside in working in Denmark, which is that the immigration and work rules generally change with each government. I mean, just in the time that we've been in Denmark, there was the green card scheme that ended just before we arrived. There's the pay limit scheme and other work schemes that are going on and even coming up the beginning of next year, there'll be further changes to the scheme as well. So what this means is that you have to pay attention to what's going on in the government and in the debates that are going on in the Folketing because it could very well affect your ability to stay in the country or come to the country if you aren't in Denmark yet. So this is one of the things that can be a downside is that again, if you, if you are Danish or even if you are EU, this may not be as big of a consideration because you're allowed to be in the country much easier. But if you aren't, these are things you really have to care about because your ability to continue to build your life in Denmark is predicated on the decisions made by a government that you're obviously not allowed to vote for. And sometimes it can kind of feel a little bit crappy because you're paying the same tax as everybody else. 
Yeah, and speaking of decision making, um, another thing that can be a real culture shock and potentially a downside is just how diffuse decision making sometimes is in a Danish professional setting. This again kind of goes along with the flat management structure, but often many people are pulled in for meetings, uh, for big strategy items, or even just smaller tasks or projects. And sometimes you're pulled into meetings or suddenly on an email thread with a lot of people and you may not even understand why am I involved with this? It's not even my department. That's not even what I do. But that's just sort of the way that things go with decision making. Now, the plus side, it means that they value your input. But the negative side and what can be a culture clash, depending on where you come from, is that it can kind of seem inefficient and maybe even like it's a slight violation of your time because there's a lot of extra meetings you have to go to now just because somebody wanted your input on a project and now you have a meeting every Tuesday at uh, 9 a.m. until 9.45. It's just the nature of kind of the, the way that a Danish office may work, but it's something you'll, I think, eventually get used to. Yeah. Collective decision making is fun because it makes sure that everyone's opinion is heard and you don't miss anything, but sometimes a decision just has to be taken. It can kind of just be annoying where someone just needs to be like, take a decision, let's move on. Yeah. And speaking of which, you also have to be able to answer a lot of questions from that. And as a manager, you probably have done that quite a bit. Yeah, that's something that you have to be aware of is that you have to be willing to listen to a lot of opinions and talk through different questions on what's going on. Make sure people really understand why we're doing something and don't just jump to what we're doing or how we're doing it. It's important to have that kind of feedback in there, even if sometimes you roll your eyes a little bit. It's okay. It's part of the culture. and It's important to make sure everyone has an opinion that's being heard and discussed. Yeah, and no matter what kind of workplace you're working in Denmark, expect that you will probably have to answer a lot of questions about the things that you're responsible for. And if you're not willing to answer those questions, then you might find that Danes don't really like you at work. And if you wanna know all the reasons why Danes may not like you at work, check out this video right here if you really wanna understand it. And thanks for watching this one, guys. Hi. Hi. Hi.